A very commonly asked question again in many MNCs is to check whether a given integer, a positive integer, okay, n, print whether the number is a perfect square or not. Now, what does this mean? What they are saying is, let us assume the input is 25, friend. Is 25 a perfect square? Yes, because 5 into 5 is 25. That is the meaning of a perfect square. You know, when you multiply two numbers, you should get this number. And the number should be the same. Yes, 5 into 5 is 25. Answer should be a yes. If in case input is 64, 8 into 8 is 64, answer should be a yes. If in case input is 32, 32 is not a perfect square, answer should be no. I think expectation is very clear to all of you. Now, this is quite a simple question. So, let us directly get to the approach as to how we have to do it. I have just written few numbers here and kept here for your understanding. Okay. So, what you must understand is, what is given to us is one n value. Let us assume that n value is 25. Okay. Our aim is to print yes or no. That is our aim. Okay. Now, yes, n is a perfect square. Now, how do you know it is a perfect square? Okay. So, let me just mark this here and keep it. 25 is what is the n value. Now, one approach which I will be doing is, I will create one for loop. The loop that is i is going to start from 1. Then what are you going to do, sir? What I'm going to do is a simple operation. I will take i, multiply it with itself. Because a perfect square is nothing but a multiplication of the two same numbers, which would result in that number. Yes or no? Now, try to understand. What is i value now? 1. Which means 1 multiplied by 1. What is the result? 1. Now, what I will do is, I will check if that is equal to this n value. Is 1 equal to 25? No. No means I will move i forward. Understood? Next, what I am going to do is, I will take 2 and multiply it with itself, i into i, 4. Next, I will check, is 4 equal to n? No, 4 is also not equal to n. Which means, again, I will move uh, i forward. Which means, now I will be doing 3 multiplied by 3, which is 9. 100% 9 is also not equal to 25. Which means, I will move i forward. Next is 4. I will take 4, multiply it with itself. I will get 16. 16 is also not equal to 25. Which means, I will move i forward. In which case, I will get 5. So, I will take 5 and multiply it by 5. In which case, I will be getting 25. And now when I take this 25 and when I compare it to my n value, 100% you can see, yes, it matches. In which case I will return yes. Understood what I am trying to say? Which means clearly you can see the approach is very simple. Start a loop from 1. Then multiply that i value with itself and check whether the multiplication is resulting in the n value given to me. Now, Till where should it go? Like this should I keep looping, looping, looping is the question. Ah, now for that, let us take a different input and check it out. Let me remove all this for us. Okay. Now let us assume n value in this case is 32. Or let us assume n value is 13 just to make it easy. 100% 13 is not a perfect square. So what I will do is I'll just mark it here for your reference. 100% this is not a perfect square. Correct? Now, what is the approach? Approach is simple. Create a for loop. i should be starting from 1. Correct or not? Now, what are we going to do? What we are going to do is multiply. 1 into 1. Answer is 1. 1 is not equal to 25. Proceed. Next, multiply 2 by 2. Answer is 4. Not equal to, uh, you know, uh, 20, uh, or sorry, 13 in this case, not 25. Next, move i forward. 3 into 3 is also... Uh, 9, not equal. Correct? Like that, if I multiply 4 into 4 also, it will not be equal. If I multiply 5 into 5 also, it will not be equal. 6 into 6 also will not be equal. 7 into 7 also will not be equal. 8 times 8 also will not be equal. 9 times 9 also will not be equal. 10 times 10 also will not be equal. 11 times 11 also will not be equal. 12 times 12 also will not be equal. And 13 times 13 also it will not be equal, which means I started from 1, it went to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I became equal to the n value. And though I became equal to n value, still the multiplication did not result in that number. Which means beyond this if I check, there is no way it will match. There is no way it will match. Correct or not? 
because the number now if i multiply 14 by 14 will 100 times be larger than this n value only any time because n multiplied by n itself is huge yes or no which means the moment i value becomes equal to n you must stop checking and that is when you confidently tell no have you understood so yes, i starts from 1. Where to stop was the question. Where to stop means it should stop when i value becomes equal to n. Which means, see, if I should write all this as a code for you, this is very, very simple. All I will do is I'll go here and I will start by telling int i. I'll create i. Next, what I will do is I'll write one for loop. Inside this for loop, two semicolons. Am I clear? Now I will tell, hey, listen, I should be starting from 1. Correct, it should always start from 1. Maximum till where should it go? It should go till the n value. So i less than equal to n. 1 by 1, I should increase every time, i plus plus. Clear till here? Now inside this, what should I do? Inside this, all I need to do is, I should now be telling, if in case, i value multiplied by i value. I'll put this within parenthesis. Is this equal to my n value? If i multiplied by i is equal to my n value, then inside this I will confidently come and say return. What to return? Yes. Yes. Understood? If it is not equal to n, I will keep checking, 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 checking. But the moment this condition becomes false, i value becomes equal to n then i will come outside this loop the moment i come outside this loop without even a single time this condition becoming true it only means one thing that it is not a perfect square so come here and very very clearly say return no no it is not a perfect square understood what i'm trying to say this is the logic i hope each and every one of you understood. This much I would like to go and type as code for you. Watch this. Now here, if I bring up the program, again this is how it will be in your coding round. Scroll on top. So you can see they would have already given one class, they would have created this, they would have passed that n value, they would have taken the n value, they would have called the function each and everything they would have done. So here make this as, uh, yeah, change the name here perfect square on it. Okay, great. Now inside this I should just write my logic. What is the logic? First int i. Next, one for loop. Inside the for loop, I will go put two semicolons. Next, I will tell i start from 1. Maximum go till n, i less than equal to n. 1 by 1 you please proceed, i plus plus. Next, inside this, check if in case. Okay, Within parenthesis, i multiplied by i, i multiplied by itself, i into i. Is this equal to the n value? If this is equal to the n value, come inside if and just tell return yes. Okay, great. Now, if this condition doesn't satisfy even one, loop is over and I came outside the loop. What should I tell? Return no. Return no. Is this much clear to all of you? That's it. This is your program. Now, if in case I come down, all this part already will be written for you. You don't have to worry about it. If in case I just go and compile this program. Compilation, no issues. Oh, there is an issue. It is telling it is incompatible because what we are supposed to return is Boolean. Understood? But what are we telling? Yes or no? What is yes or no? It is string. Now, change that to string. Okay, now if in case I were to go clear the screen, compile it, and if I execute it, you can clearly see. Okay, now the cursor is blinking. Assume I will give 25. Answer should be yes. Again, I'll execute. I'll get 64. I'll give 64. Answer should be yes. Again, I will execute. I will give 32. 100% answer should be no. That's all. I hope you understood the logic behind this. Correct or not? I hope this much is clear to all of you. However, I want you to think, is there another optimal way to do this? For example, clear the screen and just execute it once more. Okay. Now, assume 
it is 9999 yes now imagine yes this is not a perfect square press enter answer will be no that is for sure but imagine this loop it should start from 1 go till 9999 if i gave it as 9 lakhs 9000 or 9 lakh 99999 then it should go till there if i give it as 9 crores 99 lakhs 99999 yes or no which means is there some way in which we can be optimizing this code is the question is there any way there is a way i want you to try then i will explain now friends you want to understand the optimal approach now i want you to think n value is 13 let me mark it for you okay what is the logic of the code i should start from one it seems okay boss i'll start i from one okay now i will check if i into i is equal to n no yes then i will increment next i will check 2 into 2 is 4 not equal to n this is also not equal to n 4 into 4 is also not equal to n 5 into 5 is also not equal to n 6 into 6 7 into 7 8 into 8 9 into 9 10 into 10 11 into 11 12 into 12 13 into 13 and finally when i value becomes equal to n yes then we will stop yes or no because now what will happen next when i value becomes 14 it is not less than equal to n it becomes greater than equal to n and that is when we stop which means for you to understand that 13 is not a perfect square totally how many iterations you have done 13 iterations to understand now the entire aim is to see whether the number of iterations can be reduced do i really have to go till this value of n to understand it's not a perfect square there is no need there is actually an optimal approach look at this now i started from 1 1 into 1 is 1 now that 1 is less than the n value correct okay 2 times 2 is 4 4 is also less than the n value 9 is less than the n value 16 4 into 4 16 now tell me 16 is it less than this no now tell me once you realize that this i into i the value is now greater than this it's greater than the n value then is there any need to check any of these fellows because 100% you will not get a perfect square yes or no 100% you are not going to get this because already 4 into 4 only is greater than this where is the concept which means don't you think exactly at this point itself i can stop why to go till 13 i could have stopped let me give you one more example okay let us assume n value is 26 now what i will do is let me show you that 26 here now you only think logically in our current approach i will start from 1 all the way till 26 in fact till 27 it will go that is when the condition will fail so totally how many iterations 26 iterations correct but if you observe this carefully 1 into 1 is less than n value 2 into 2 is less than n value. 3 into 3 is less than n value. 4 into 4 is less than n value. 5 into 5, 25 is also less than 26. But 6 into 6 is 36, and 100% 36 is not less than equal to the n value. Which means from here onwards going forward is pointless. Going forward is pointless. Which means how do you know where you should stop? Very simple. Where you should stop is. when you take the i value multiply by itself okay and it is less than n if it is less than n or in fact equal to n till then you can do correct or not but the moment i into i becomes greater it is not less it is not equal to but became greater boss just stop it why are you proceeding so this one condition same thing only one modification will change the game instead of writing it like this i less than equal to n i will just make it as i into i is less than equal to n that's all are you able to understand now if i multiply it if it is less than n value very good proceed if it is equal to n value very good still okay but if it becomes greater stop there is no point so the condition can literally change it yes or no let's try whether this will work. if in case i take you to the code i'll just say i into i less than equal to n that's all now also if i go compile and if i execute 
Compilation, no issues. Execution, if I do. Let's give 25. Answer is yes. But you didn't do 25 iterations. Yes or no? Next, if in case I say 26. Answer is no. But you didn't have to do 26 iterations. If in case I go and I tell, uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 1,200, uh, 12,345. Yes. If in case I press enter, answer is no. But I didn't have to do 12,345 iterations. Much before that only, it would have stopped and told me no. So this one small change can really make it more efficient. Thank you.